Welcome, and thank you for joining for another whiskey review. Today, we're going to go a bit outside the bounds, take a look at a Japanese whiskey, this Nika, 17-year-old. Courtesy of D2Silv, Dustin, once again my guest today. Dustin, since this is your bottle that yep. you've brought up, I think, for the third time now. We've had it a few times, yeah. We've had it a few times. Tell me all about this Nika 17-year-old. Unfortunately, I can't tell you a whole lot, Mike. Uh, this is true Japanese whiskey, so we're not talking about some of the, in today's market, we're seeing a lot of Japanese whiskeys that are actually scotch or bourbon or some kind of Canadian that they then are aging there. This is true Japanese whiskey, mm -hmm. 17 years old. Mm -hmm. This is now a discontinued bottle, unfortunately. Yes, and can, can I get age statement? Japanese whiskey is very easy I to hear anymore. I think it now, I think they're all gone. Mm. From production, now there is still a fairly decent amount floating around. The 12s are still out there. I know the 17 and 21 did come out this year for some markets. This being 2020? The 2020 version of the 17? No, 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 sorry, I should say, in 2019, 2019 around yes. the holidays, I do know bottles came into distribution. I don't know what year they were bottled. Mm -hmm. I just know they showed up in distribution. Mm -hmm. I didn't see them anywhere here. This bottle I got in 2018, mm -hmm. so it's been sitting around a while. Lucky. Do you know anything about the cast maturation with this? You know, they are not very clear. And with all the Japanese, they tend to be big on just blending lots and lots of different casks mm -hmm. until they get the, pro the profile they want. So really, it is truly a blend, and it's probably got a lot of different oak. Yeah, I tried to figure out a little bit reading the back of the label. I know there are some sherry casks in this, but you know, yeah. I don't know how that they're bourbon casks in or what else. But let's uh, try to figure out what's going on with this one, because this is a... More increasingly, a very rare bird. You know, we're not yeah. going to be able to get it, this type of age statement. Japanese whiskey is very easily anymore. I've looked at uh, the Yamazaki 18s and 25s. They're just oh. ridiculous what those things cost anymore, and I can't even find this one. So, Kush, you anything about the 12 now? The prices are four figures. Even those are 100 bucks, the 12 year old, which, yeah. is, which is expensive for a 12. Well, that, that's if you find it retail. Yeah. Secondary already is going two, three. Whew. Yep. Pricey. All right, Dustin. So, only 43%, like a lot of Japanese whiskeys. I don't yeah. think I've had any cast drink Japanese whiskey. The Nika from the barrel, have you not had that one yet? No. Oh, no. I'll bring that next time. So maybe I'll get to try one here soon, but today we're going to focus on this 17. We're going to take it to the nose. What as, do you he think? as he goes and does the nose, I'm going to just show this one time, guys. Screw. I love screw caps. On bottles you're going to have for more than a year, that's the way to go. And this is a nice one, too. I tell you what, um... I like the look of a cork better. Cork feels more fancy to me. Yeah. But I will say this. I've had some older bottles of whiskeys, as you know. And <laughs> when I do those, the cork disintegrates. So I'd much rather have a screw top in those scenarios. Yeah. A bottle I really care about. I want a, I want a nice screw top. Not the cheap stuff. This is a nice one. Anyway, I am getting fruits. I mean, like, red fruits. I'm getting vanillas. But I am getting, like, just... I'm being blown away by just how many little subtle flavor of just coming in here all at once. Okay, so this is, again, it's my third shot at it, so I've kind of narrowed down. Instantly, I get vanilla on the nose. Yep, I'm getting but, berries, though. But then, yes, I'm getting light fruits. I'm getting apples, pears, soft pear. Definitely berries, but like a, not quite a blueberry. Raspberries and blackberries. Yeah, blackberry for sure. Yeah, maybe a little bit of raspberry as well. Maybe a bit of strawberry. I might even be getting a touch of grape. Yeah, there's something dark about the berry note. There's maybe. something dark here, yeah, yeah. But it's, and it's not grape. I, I say that all the time when I get dark fruits, but I don't think it's plums or raisins either. But well, that's why I said it's not blueberry, but it's, it's a dark berry. berry. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, some type of, maybe dark cherry, dark. Honestly, it's, it's the fact that it's a berry note with a sherry finish that's giving it that darkness. I mean, you can yes. tell there's a nice, rich sherry here. I don't know if you can see from the camera, guys, but the color. Yeah, very dark. Very dark, and I don't believe they color. <clears throat> No, no, I'm positive the Japanese whiskey's don't color of the whiskey. The honor system, man, come on. Yeah, uh -huh. I don't know if I trust that fully. <laughs> like I said, there's a lot of uh, Japanese whiskey being bottled that's actually scotch. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I tell you what, this is uh, a single malt, just like with the scotch. <clears throat> Correct. Um, so I, I do get some of those very traditional, like sort of Balvini uh, fruity flavors in this. It kind of reminds me of that. Also kind of reminds me a little bit of the Macallan 21 Fine Oak. Okay. And some of those fresher type of orchard fruits, maybe just a light citrus, maybe a light tangerine. I have much more of the Macallan 21 than the Balvenie when I'm nosing this one. Yeah. I, I, I do. I, I, well, the other thing is, again, that's a blend of multiple casks. Sure. And they're using very good sherry casks. Mm -hmm. They're using very good bourbon casks. And then they're watering the hell out of it for no apparent reason. Well, yeah, probably more of a cost thing and then availability thing. and then. But, but I got to tell you, these are ones that... The fragrance, the nose, especially right out of yeah. the, right out of the bottle, is just really nice. I was getting ready to say this is. 
we get no alcohol here, yes, but it is as fragrant as a cast drink whiskey. Oh yeah, it's very, it, it's, it jumps out the nose as far as the fruit flavors, more so since than, they, than another 43% type of whiskey, say like um, the, the Balvini 21-year-old Portwood, or say the McAllen 21-year-old Fine Oak. It's very, very punchy as far as the strength of the fruit. Yeah. Now that we've been on this for a little while, I'm starting to get darker um, sweetness. Maybe, you know, um, brown sugar, maybe um, there is a, a dark bread. There is a candied sweetness that's coming up now that accompanies the fruit. Like, it's, it, it's, it's sugar on the yeah, fruit. Yeah, it, it might even be a caramel, but like a, and not a, just a really light candied one, but a rich, dark caramel. It's almost like caramel with white powdered sugar like you put on waffles or pancakes. Oh yeah, at the very end I do get a little of that white sugar, yeah, yeah. Dude, this is so nice. Yeah. Thanks again for bringing it. Oh no, absolutely. Yeah, very candied, all those fruits. I'm this is one that's hard for me to pour these days. I'll let you go and start drinking, but this is a one that's yeah. hard for me to pour a glass of just simply because I can't get it anymore at any at any reasonable price that a human would want to pay for a whiskey. Um, just that is what it is. Mm. Let me get into this one here, find out what I think. Uh, Mike, let you start with the profile. The palate, so it's not as fruity on the palate as on the nose. I'm still getting vanilla. I'm getting a nice ridge of ginger as soon as you swallow. I get a nice little barley note too. I mean, for as sweet and as fruity it was on the on the nose, there are some fruits. There is a little bit of sugar sweetness, but the palate took a change. It took, mm -hmm. took a, a far different turn. And it's some, some darker areas. I do get some honey. There's a grainy barleyness to it that really, really stands out. What do you think? Yeah. So much as complex as the nose is, the palate is just as complex. Um, but you, Mike's right, it is Chicken noodle sweet, soup. but you're not, you're starting to get some of that umami kind mm -hmm, of, uh, mm -hmm. it's not salty like a peated or an Isla or even Island whiskey, but there's a, there's a salted note to it. Mm -hmm. There's a hint, and I'll tell you what, it took me a while to get this, and I wouldn't have picked up on it if this was my first pour. There's a hint of smoke. Yeah, there, wood smoke. Yeah. Not peat smoke, but like a wood <sighs> smoke. I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be shocked if this is 1 to 3 ppms, actually. It, it wouldn't shock me. There's something about the Hukushu 12 that reminds me a little bit of the oakiness. Well, Hukushu is absolutely peated. It is. No, you're right. So I don't know if it's... It's not the same smoke that's in the mm -hmm. Hukushu 12, but the Hukushu 12 I know is a little bit peated. I don't, I, I don't know. Maybe it's what smoke I'm getting here. And what I've, what I've said, though, is I think they blended a lot of barrels, so it's possible one of, you know, 100 barrels or whatever went into this, that there's a little bit of peat in one of those, or they used a second filled and they had a peated cask before it, but there is a, just a hint of that smoke. You're also getting, I think Mike nailed it with the barley. Mm -hmm. um, like I used to like, back when I was younger, there'd be like uh, this barley I would like make kind of like an oatmeal. Mm -hmm. And it gives me a little bit of that note. Um, if you've ever had traditional wedding soup, like someone hand makes wedding soup and you get like the, the barley noodles, mm -hmm. like kind of in there, that like that richness, yep. I'm getting some of that. And it's almost like a chicken noodle soup broth. As far as like a linger on the palate, ooh, so like there's just a bit of salinity to it. But that's not really what you're picking up. You're picking up some type of some type of a light savory note, yeah. like a light chicken. So I never water this, and but putting a drop of water in here actually just brought the sweetness way out in front and center, especially you know, on the nose. Yeah, but we've talked about in the past, like you had a drop of water, and a lot of times you bring out the oak tannins, the bitter, the sour, which is not always a bad thing. Here, it just made this so sweet. Um, it's almost like a cut of filet. There's no way you can mess it up. Remember, we're talking. I don't know if I was talking to you about filet. Like you really can't under or overcook it. Yeah. To where it's not edible. We did have that conversation. Yeah. So yeah. like a filet, like with a good cut of filet, there's no way you can really mess it up. I yep. feel like the same way with this whiskey. Now you could probably drown it with too much water, but my point is that if you have it you're going neat, you're going with a few drops of water. Yeah. Try it at three or four drops. There's really no way you can mess this up. It's just it's a incredibly balanced and incredibly complicated whiskey. This is one of the most complex whiskeys I've had. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's so obvious that there's different finishings or different states of the wood. And this is a showcase of the master blender's ability to put together an incredible whiskey. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if there are, you're right, because like the wood smoke to me almost reminds me of the wood smoke I would get like off of old sherry French oak casks. Because French oak is like some more porous, so I feel mm -hmm. like it gets in there and kind of tears out more of that little wood, like a wisp of a wood smoke. Yeah. I mean, just, just excellent, excellent whiskey. Now I'm getting a little bit of the, those tannins in there, but they're so, they're, they're so well integrated into everything else about this whiskey. It's just a component. Yeah. Now, are you getting anything that wows you about this, Mike? 
Well, the sweetness to me, okay, so it's if I had to say, the, the, what wows me about it is the complexity. There's yeah. so many things going on here. I mean, what I like to do is with any whiskey, I think to myself, what's the first thing I pick up or when I go to it, what am I expecting off the note? Yep. I'm expecting sweetness, berries, orchard fruits, pears, apples, yep. something along those lines. That's what I'm expecting. But then everything else that comes in is just, yeah. it's just so welcome. There's nothing here that I don't want. And just, it's probably 15 different things on the nose. Yeah. And all of them are just welcome at my I'll table for what, Thanksgiving. I, I think there's some older whiskey in here. I agree. Um, I think there's some 20, dare I say 25 year old? I, I think there's 20 plus year old whiskey in this yeah. for sure. I mean, cause I'm just getting this beautiful, well done oak richness and just a complexity that you just don't get with the younger whiskey. And now I'm getting like a, like a citrus note that wasn't really there at first, at first, but with a few drops of water, I kind of, the sweetness was there, but it kind of sectioned the sweetness off. Yeah. Now I'm getting this nice like blood orange note, but like a watery blood Ooh. orange. Yeah, I can see that a little bit. You getting that at all? It's blood orange and oak. And what's that thing people used to eat for breakfast with a big piece of fruit? Like grapefruit? Yeah, like a grapefruit. Where they like, add a little sugar They add a little sugar. So yeah. a little bit of sugar and light grapefruit too, to me, on this one. I'm not blood getting, orange grapefruit? I'm not getting grapefruit, but I can see where you're getting, um, because it's got a, that citrus kind of note, but I'm, I'm more in the blood orange world. Blood orange is just, to me, one step from a sugary grapefruit. That's true, but I, I'm getting more of that. It isn't stinging like a grapefruit. Grapefruit's would. more bitter to me. This is less, so that's kind of where I'm. Agreed. Watered down, watered down sugary grapefruit. All right, I'm gonna take my last little sip with water, see if it changed at all. I tell you what, though, there is just there's so many nice notes, and if, even here on the legs, I'm seeing this is 43 percent. I've added a drop of water, and I don't know if you guys can see that, but I am seeing some really impressive legs on this whiskey. No, it is. Uh, in fact, I don't think I've seen legs this nice on some of the cast drink stuff I've had recently. I tell you what, with water, instantly that, that sugary sweetness is, is more prominent on the palate. Mm -hmm. Then it quickly transitions into a, is a few more uh, tannin-rich notes, if, mm -hmm. I, if that's probably the best way to say it. The barley kind of took a, a little step down, yeah. but it's still there, especially on the linger. Um, I'm definitely getting pears. I'm definitely getting raspberries, blackberries, covered in sugar. Wow, just, just an impressive, impressive whiskey. Yeah. Absolutely, I completely agree. I mean, I'm just, I'm getting everything mm. here. There is just, and I'll tell you what, I, I feel like you could have this five times and I come, have, up, come up with different things. Absolutely, yeah. And I agree. I think I preferred without uh, the water uh, a little better because I, it gave me more of those dark flavors. It made it more of a contrast to the nose, which I sometimes really enjoy. Dude, it's a toss up for me. I mean, really, I, there were things I liked better yep. or worse on the nose with and without water, and on the palate with and without water. Like really, as I said before with the filet reference, it's hard to mess it up. Oh, I Either, agree. All four ways are good. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so whiskey score on this one. I tell you what, I'm very impressed with this. I'm gonna give it a 92 out of 100. This is an excellent, excellent Japanese whiskey. Whiskey yep. period, Japanese whiskey, probably up there with one of the best Japanese whiskeys I've ever had, 92 out of 100 for me. I came in expecting to give this a 90, and I went, I went right to 91, and now I'm debating the 92, but yeah. I'm going to stay 91. This is this is better than some $400 bottles I have, Mike. Yeah, no, I, and I tell you, um, I've made mention to Dustin a few times, and my other buddy Keith in Multiman Cave, that 46 is my new minimum standard yep. as far as whiskeys that I will buy, just because I tend to think that 43 is watered down, and they really don't do it for me. This is a rare exception. This is, yeah, and this blows the exception out of the water. Blows I've out got 48s that don't have this much flavor. Oh. That don't have this much on the nose, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that don't hold water as well as this does. I've had cast drinks to do the same. Yeah, I mean this is just <clears> an excellent craft drink. So you're at a 91, 92 out of 100. Yep. I'm definitely at a 92 out of 100. Um, Nika, 17 year old, not Nikita. Uh, we did another review where I kept calling <laughs> Nikita. No, I just couldn't get that. Uh, just FYI, 200 retail, uh, <laughs> right. I, and I think this year they still came out around 200 retail. Stunner. Stunner Maybe for that 250 price. at retail. It's great whiskey at that price. Yeah, I'd absolutely. If I, if I saw these for two fifty on the shelf, I'd buy a couple. Yeah. At least two. At least two. Instant buy. If you've never bought a whiskey over two hundred dollars, this, this is would not be a, a bad start. There's no way you, you're not going to like this. This yeah. is this is like Boone having twenty five or like Balvin twenty one year old Portwood. Yeah. If you don't like this whiskey, maybe whiskey isn't for you. Yeah. I mean, not, it, saying, not saying that's a bad thing. Yeah. Maybe it ain't for you. Same well, like I said, me. this. If I was somebody said, hey, I want to buy my first expensive bottle of whiskey, and they have this option, couldn't go wrong. This is probably one of the best starter high-end whiskeys I've ever had. No, I agree. Well, you have our thoughts on it. We want to thank you for once again joining for another whiskey review. And Dustin, what do we wish the folks? Happy drinking. See you next time.